Hi, welcome to Mooney Reads. My name is Beck, and today I'm going to be suggesting some books based around the novel The Symptoms of Being Human by Jeff Garbin. This video is going to be good for people who are fans of the book, as well as people who thought that a few things in this book left something to be desired. One of the suggestions that I have is going to be within genre, so another YA pick, but the other ones are going to be outside of that. The reason that I did this is because I know that some people want to branch out of kind of the genres that they're comfortable with and it's really hard to know where to start. And a really good way to kind of step outside of that is to find something that you've liked or something that you're comfortable with um, and kind of grow on that rather than just hopping into a totally different genre in an area you're not sure about at all. So to start off with, I'm gonna say a little bit about The Symptoms of Being Human for maybe some people who haven't read it. This book is a realistic YA fiction based around a non-binary protagonist named Riley. Um, throughout the book, they navigate the waters as a teen, um, kind of coming out and figuring themselves out and that sort of thing. For me, this was a pretty solid book. I was fairly happy with the representation. However, um, it's kind of clear within the details that this is written by someone who is cisgender, heterosexual, which isn't inherently bad. I do think that people should try to be inclusive of the diversity of characters that they have. It's pretty clear that Jeff Garvin did his research pretty well. However, there are some details that just aren't going to be filled in uh, just from researching it. There is something, if you are writing a narrative about being non-binary, that you're not going to be able to totally get in a 100% nuanced way um, unless you've kind of experienced that yourself. And the same goes for writing any other minority character. There is kind of one point in this book that I was kind of uncomfortable with and I'm not really sure how I feel about it at this point. I'm gonna go ahead and put up a timestamp for where I stopped talking about this topic. I'll put it in the description too in case you need it there um, because it's technically a little bit spoilery and we're going to be talking about a sensitive topic. In general, if you're going to be reading this book, you should know that there is a scene of a sexual assault. I'm not really sure where I stand in regards to the scene because sexual assault is definitely a big problem and LGBT people, um, especially trans people, are more likely to experience it. So it's important to talk about, but at the same time, I don't know how comfortable I am with a cis guy um, taking on that narrative. I don't know. I have mixed feelings about it. If you have a strong opinion about it, let me know in the comments. But I wanted to kind of point that out and talk about that a little bit just so that you don't go into the book, um, and have that be a surprise to you. I think in particular one of the details that made it kind of clear to me that this person didn't have the lived experience came through in the decision that he made not to release um, Riley's assigned gender at birth. I respect that choice and I think that it was interesting um, both literarily and in terms of like talking about gender and things like that. However, in my personal experience and just with talking to other trans and non-binary people, it's just not really realistic. I don't think that that decision was at all wrong or bad, but I do think that it made it kind of more apparent that this wasn't made kind of through lived experience. But like I said, overall, this was a pretty good book, especially for somebody um, who wrote it and didn't have any personal experience. But I think the books that I'm going to recommend kind of fill in the gaps where this one fell a little bit short. So if you felt a little bit weird about this book, these other books will probably be better for you. And if you did really, really enjoy this book, I think that you'll also have a good time with these other ones. So the first suggestion that I have is the other one that's within YA, and that is I Wish You All the Best by Mason Deaver. I read this, I think, a couple of months after I read Symptoms of Being Human, and immediately after I had read Symptoms of Being Human, I couldn't really place 100% exactly where... I felt that missing piece within the book because initially I did really like it, but I just knew that there was something a little bit off. But after reading I Wish You All the Best, this had the precise thing that that one didn't, and a lot of it has to do with the fact that the author is actually non-binary, so they actually have lived this experience. One of the really great things about this book is that it feels like you're sort of 
quintessential young adult fiction book. Don't get me wrong, the character's identity is central to the story, but the way that it was written, it felt like it belonged. It didn't feel like they were going out of their way to talk about this person's queerness. Because they do hit on a lot of the typical things that you would see in a young adult story. They talk about love and they talk about friendship and finding friends, but within a lot of the different topics, especially the love and friends, their experiences of that and their experiences regarding their identity are interweaved in a way that just really makes sense. I think one of the things that makes this work is how the character talks about their dysphoria and how it's mentioned, um, you know, looking at the fact that even while they're not out to their friends, they still get that hurt and kind of anger that comes from misgendering. And in general, honestly, the way that uh, they talk about dysphoria and describe it really hit me in a lot of different ways, despite the fact that Ben is going to have um, kind of different concerns uh, so far as their appearance goes that I would, I still um, really kind of felt a lot of the description of the feeling. And it's not like Mason Deaver really goes into these really intricate, long kind of descriptions of it. They're able to do this in a really short amount of words. I actually wanted to um, read a short passage that I really connected with. If you're one of those people who doesn't really like to hear excerpts or things like that, I will again put the timestamp on the screen and in the description so you can skip. But it is really only a few lines. It's in chapter 15. I turn around in the mirror, watching the tag on my arm fly back and forth. It looks nice enough. Maybe I could save this for a more special occasion. Not that I have many. But the more I stare at my body, the more I hate it. It's the same feeling that I had before I realized I'm non-binary. Things just aren't where they're supposed to be, and I feel like I'm larger and smaller than myself at the same time. Like nothing adds up. So that was a really short and simple description, but honestly, when I read it the first time, I felt so incredibly seen. That was one of the many times that I cried reading this book. Another thing that makes this book really great, I think, um, you get this part from the book jacket, so it's not really a spoiler, but the book starts with them coming out to their parents and getting kicked out of their house. So in that way, it's, I don't want to say stereotypical, but that's like a pretty common narrative that we see. I don't want to give too much away, but I really loved the interactions with their sister and kind of the conclusion of some of the family storylines. I don't know, I think that it was just handled really well. Um, a lot of it was really realistic without being totally depressing. Um, there were actually moments, you know, within this really hard, awful situation that ended up making me cry tears of happiness because of how some of the characters end up acting. This was a five-star book for me, um, and I highly, highly recommend it. If you liked The Symptoms of Being Human, you're going to love this book. The next recommendation that I have, we're going to branch out into nonfiction with A Year Without a Name by Cyrus Grace Dunham. This is a memoir by a non-binary person. It focuses on a period in their life when they were thinking a lot about names and stuff like that, but you do also hear bits and pieces about their life beforehand as well. The way that they use time is very fluid um, and also kind of intangible in kind of a way that's similar to how they talk about their gender. Overall, I just really loved how this book was written. I think that even if you're not used to reading nonfiction, this is going to be a really good book for you because the way that it's written is very, like, literarily speaking, interesting. The um, main kind of content warning on this, I would say, is that they do describe their relationship with their body, and there's a small section that almost verges on, like, body horror a little bit, or it, it really got to me. But overall, this was a really wonderful book. I think in particular, what made this book hit me personally has to do with their relationship with their body and dysphoria and dissociation. So where I Wish You All the Best had more short but very accurate uh, kind of instances when uh, they were talking about dysphoria, this book does kind of describe it in different ways. I wanted to read kind of a passage from this one. Uh, to kind of show you what I'm talking about and because I just really love the passage and kind of want an excuse to read it. And this starts on page 54. Calling something a lie implies that one has the truth in one's mouth and swallows it. What if one can only speak, only think, what one suspects another person wants to hear? Then where is the truth? 
How does one learn to think it? The more I suspected people thought I was a liar, the more impossible it seemed to tell the truth. There were so many truths, I didn't know how to locate one. Lying was embedded in every gesture, every statement, every interaction, every time I reaffirmed the presumption that I was female, which was constantly. I resigned myself to being incapable of not lying. To do otherwise would require being a new person entirely, one who had not fashioned themselves, herself, around hiding. And then another section down on page 55. I couldn't interact with anyone or anything without absorbing their feelings, or more accurately, what I perceived to be their feelings. A hybrid sponge sail, I sucked it all up, then lost my course. I wanted harder skin, better boundaries, interconnectedness without losing myself. I hated my body even though I could hardly feel it. I hesitate to even call the exhausting day-to-day -day of embodiment dysphoria, that catch-all for pain of having a body that doesn't align with one's sense of self. What was the sense of self after all? A delusion? Mental illness? I struggled to believe my own discomfort. I just felt crazy. And if I admitted I was dysphoric, I'd have to deal with the fallout of having to decide whether to do something about it. So that is A Year Without a Name. They also talk about um, romantic relationships in here, as well as some friendships. Um, and I think they hit on a little bit of family stuff. It's a great book. It's pretty short, so it would be easy to get through. And if you are interested in the non-binary experience, this is absolutely a good book to go for. The next book that I'm going to suggest is a slightly different genre still, and that is going to be from poetry. And that is The Lord of the Butterflies by Andrea Gibson. I absolutely love Andrea Gibson as a poet. I love reading their writing. I love seeing them perform. So really anything that you can find or get from Andrea Gibson is not going to be disappointing. In a lot of their works, they do tend to talk about a lot of different things, gender, sexuality, mental health. Um, as well as different aspects of community. I thought that this one had some particular poems that would fit well um, with the symptoms of being human because in part of it um, they're going to an LGBT meeting um, and so they do talk about coming together as a community in that way so I thought that it would be good to have that aspect as well reflected. I also thought that it was interesting to recommend this one after having recommended A Year Without a Name. I had a really hard time choosing a small passage of this book to read out loud because I just wanna reread the whole book. But I did find one that was short and really impactful that dealt with gender and also kind of directly tied uh, to the memoir that we just talked about. The title is Andrea Andrew. Your name is a gift. You can return if it doesn't fit. I thought even in those few words that it was really beautiful. And the fact that they did that in such few words ties back to what I was talking about in I Wish You All the Best. So there we go with all of these books being connected. Another poem from this one that I wanted to point out that I did not read because it's very long and I would have cried is Orlando. If I go into detail about how that poem hit me, we'd be here for a while, and again, there would be tears. So I might save that for if I decide to do a book focused on poetry or on Andrea Gibson in particular. Um, but obviously you can find Orlando on here, um, but I also would encourage you to go find a performance video of them doing it. There's one version of it in particular where Mary Lambert is singing while they're performing the poem. I'll link that in the description. But definitely check that out. I cannot speak highly enough of Andrea Gibson. Please buy their books um, or at least go watch them on YouTube. Those are all of the books that I wanted to kind of explicitly recommend and talk about. But before I leave, I did want to talk about one book on my TBR that I think will end up fitting really well, and that is Gender Queer, a memoir by Maya Kababe. As the title implies, this is a memoir, but it is written um, in, like, comic form. So I'm really excited to read this. I read Fun Home a while back and absolutely fell in love with it, so I am ready for another memoir written like that. I've heard nothing but good things about this, um, so I'm excited about it. If you're interested in these other books that I've mentioned, chances are you'll probably like this. I have a feeling that I'm going to like it. And if you want to read this book or are planning kind of on reading it sometime soon, definitely check out the NB Book Club. This is the comic that they're going to read in the month of April alongside um, 
another kind of regular novel. And I'll leave the link to that. That is a book club that Bowties and Books put together. Hopefully you found something good to read from this video. If you've read any of these books before, please let me know what you thought about them in the comments. And also let me know what your favorite book with non-binary representation is. And thank you all so much for watching. Bye!